Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to talk about a very interesting concept of tremendously or stupendously large black holes. Black holes so large that they sort of defy our expectations and go beyond the limits of how big we thought black holes can get. But more specifically, we're going to talk about the idea how these black holes can also explain a lot of mysteries in the universe. Things like, for example, the mysterious dark matter, things like, for example, certain quasars and certain galaxies that otherwise don't really make any sense. But to start, let's actually talk about the idea of how massive black holes can get to begin with. Do black holes have a size limit? Is there actually a point at which a black hole sort of stops growing and becomes the largest black hole in the universe? Well, the answer to that is kind of yes, but also kind of not really. Yes, there is a limit, or at least there seems to be a limit based on all of the observations of what we've seen around us in the universe. No, not really, because hypothetically, black holes can actually grow indefinitely. For example, in this simulation, we have five different black holes from a really small one, only a little bit more massive than the sun itself, up to the size of Sagittarius A star, the central black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. This one here is about 4.3 million masses of the sun, and in terms of the radius, or specifically the radius of the shadow that you see right here, that's about um, 19 times bigger than the sun. But quick clarification, what you're looking at here is not the famous event horizon. This is just the shadow of the black hole, with the event horizon being a little bit closer than that. And the difference between the event horizon and the shadow is not really that large. The event horizon is that area around the black hole where nothing can escape anymore. That's basically where even the light sort of falls into the black hole and can no longer escape. But the shadow starts a little bit farther away in the innermost stable orbit, where even the light sort of starts orbiting around the black hole and is unable to escape. And this produces the shadow around the event horizon. With the most famous shadow being this one right here, M87 star black hole. But because we understand that a lot of black holes will have very similar structures, including the accretion disk that you see right here, we also believe that they mostly grow using the same mechanism, essentially by absorbing the gas and the matter that orbits around the accretion disk, and slowly growing larger and larger as a lot of this mass starts to fall into the black hole, creates the disk around it, and eventually all of this stuff makes its way toward the center of the black hole, adding to its total mass. Now that's kind of what we believe happens in most of the black holes, if not all of the black holes, with some black holes of course also growing through the mergers, but these mergers are not really as frequent as for example various events where gas gets to be deposited inside the black hole. But a few years ago scientists started to ponder how big can black holes get theoretically, and they came up with an answer of about 10 billion masses of the sun. Essentially, they believe that around 10 billion masses of the sun, the growth of the black hole becomes almost impossible and the black holes shut down the productivity around them and basically stay relatively stable at that mass of around 10 billion masses. Naturally, it didn't really take that long for someone to discover a black hole that was a lot more massive than the predicted limit. And we've discovered quite a lot of them, with the most recent one being the relatively nearby Holmberg 15A star, the black hole in the middle of this particular galaxy you see on the screen. It's been calculated to be about 40 billion masses of the Sun, which sort of makes this about four times the mass of the original limit. And after all of these studies from the last few years, a lot of these scientists started to recalculate this limit, discovering that it's maybe about closer to 50 billion masses of the Sun. And we started to refer to these black holes as ultramassive black holes, with many of these ultramassive black holes becoming so ridiculously large and so ridiculously massive that they would actually start to swallow up the stable part of the accretion disk, reaching sizes that would be several times larger than the solar system itself. And because of these ridiculous sizes, the accretion disk would just be unable to form around these black holes, thus not allowing the black hole to grow any larger. So, theoretically at least, or in terms of mathematics, the size limits seem to have been around 50 billion masses of the Sun. We know that at least one black hole out there, Ton618, which I mentioned in one of the previous videos, seems to beat this limit as well. The current estimate suggests that Ton618 is roughly around, here we go, here it is, 66 billion masses of the Sun. Now, we don't really know if it's exactly that big or if it possibly is even bigger than that, but the point is that we keep discovering different black holes that seem to defy our expectations and defy our mathematical calculations. 
which is also a very important factor here because we do want to understand how all of these very massive black holes form and what actually made it possible for them to exist. Now, one of the possible explanations, of course, is that it was through various collisions with other massive black holes, but that would require a lot of collisions and that would also require a lot of mass from various nearby galaxies. We've never really seen something like this happen, and because the universe is only about 13.8 billion years old, it's unlikely that so many collisions would happen in a single galaxy so quickly. On the other hand, we've also been discovering some really massive black holes in these very bright but also very young quasars. I've talked about one of these quasars relatively recently, where it was discovered to be about 1.6 billion masses of the Sun in a galaxy that was only a few million years old. And that kind of also doesn't make sense. How can such a massive galaxy, or such a massive uh, quasar that is, form so early on in the universe? And all of these questions possibly have one single answer. The answer that was recently argued in the paper that, as always, you can find in the description below. It was essentially a proposition of a new type of a black hole known as stupendously large black holes. And the idea here is far from original, far from being new. The main proposition suggests that all of these black holes were created in the beginning of the universe. They are what's known as primordial black holes. Originally proposed by the famous uh, Soviet scientist, Soviet astronomer Yakov Zeldovich, and further elaborated by the famous Stephen Hawking. And the main point here is that in early universe, there was a lot of density distribution with some regions being a lot more dense than others. Those high density regions had a very high chance of suddenly collapsing into an extremely massive object. But as the universe cooled down, instead of becoming stars, instead of becoming massive galaxies, those tiny super density regions suddenly became these really, really massive black holes. With some black holes obviously being a lot more massive than others, yet some other black holes being very, very low in mass. And so there was this huge population of primordial black holes that formed across the entire universe. Now, Stephen Hawking back in the days argued that this is how we can actually explain the mysterious dark matter. By having these primordial black holes everywhere in the universe and just being relatively difficult to detect, we would actually have just enough mass formed to explain the conditions for the universe to behave the way we see it behave. So in other words, primordial black holes is one of the potential explanations for dark matter. But what's more is that these primordial black holes also allow us to explain some other mysteries such as, for example, how ultra-massive black holes formed so early in the universe. In the last few years, we've discovered several different quasars, these really distant objects that are extremely bright and have an extremely powerful black hole in the middle, where the black hole doesn't actually have any explanation. It's too massive to exist so early in the universe. But if this black hole was created as a primordial black hole, it would totally suddenly make sense. It was already massive when the galaxy started to develop. And so in the study, the scientists go through a lot of detail determining, at least mathematically, how such unusual black holes could form, how large they could get, and most importantly, how we could possibly discover them. Now, in terms of the discovery, we still haven't obviously found any, but mathematically, these objects do make sense and they can definitely exist out there. Most importantly though, they do explain a lot of these unusual observations in the universe, including black holes that otherwise make no sense. And what's more is that this presents us with a completely open limit now, basically almost no limit. The black holes can now be 100 billion masses of the Sun, but chances are they're going to be completely isolated from anything. They might be in the middle of a galaxy, but they're not going to have an active galactic nucleus because they're not going to be able to essentially create the accretion disk anymore. At the same time, many of them can also be completely isolated from everything, and some of them, even if they do get certain gas near them and will start producing some kind of energy, will actually produce so much galactic wind that all of the other gas will simply get blown out of the galactic system. They will be left with nothing to consume and will most likely maintain their mass and their size for billions of years. But this also means that we could hypothetically find a black hole somewhere out there that's going to be trillions of masses of the Sun, possibly even hundreds of trillions. This is something that we can't even truly imagine right now, but at least according to this paper, it totally makes sense now. But also theoretically, we're going to have trouble seeing it. We might be able to observe it through various gravitational effects, but it's not going to be producing the same types of radiation and also same types of emissions as typical quasars and typical active galactic nuclei. 
In other words, it's a very mysterious and also a very fascinating topic that one day we might learn more about. For now though, it's basically in the realm of mathematics and in the realm of theories. Not really factually proven yet. However, since we've already discovered black holes that sort of beat previous limits, including Ton 618, which seems to be 66 billion masses of the Sun, all of this already means that we need to sort of rethink how we think about black holes and rethink the idea behind their formation as well. As a matter of fact, one of the recent uh, studies that came out not so long ago even suggested that some of the recent observations from Nanograph that I mentioned in one of the previous videos do actually imply that planet Earth is currently being pulled and pushed around by all of these gravitational waves from a lot of these stupendously large black holes as they collide with one another, or as they orbit around one another creating gravitational waves. And all of this of course suggests that there are these giants somewhere out there that might be invisible to us, that could be orbiting around one another, creating all of these effects we're observing from planet Earth, but not truly understanding what is it that we're detecting, because our theories haven't really caught up with the observations just yet. Nevertheless, all of these discoveries are absolutely fascinating, and in the next decade or so, we'll probably have clear answers about everything that's happening here. Is it black holes, or is it some other phenomenon? Do these stupendously large black holes truly exist, or is it just a theoretical fantasy? And possibly even discover some other massive black holes out there that can help us understand how the universe was formed in the beginning, how various black holes came to be, and how large these giants can truly get. For now, nobody really knows, and so the science is going to try to discover all of this in the next few decades. Until we actually learn something else about these massive black holes, or until we understand how all of this forms, that's really all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the studies I mentioned in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Also, maybe check out some of the other videos on black holes I've made previously, and there's actually quite a few of them out there. I think there's over a hundred. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.